Good morning everybody and a very warm welcome to Ringwood South and today I have a much delayed um, layer update for you. Um, it did originally go up yesterday and my apologies for those of you who were looking forward to watching that. Um, unfortunately that video had to get taken down because there was a technical issue with it. Um, I'm not quite sure why or what the reason was for it um, but hey ho. Um, so I'm ha now having to do another layer update which is basically um, the same as yesterday's. So for those of you who did manage to watch all of it, or all of it uninterrupted, um, then feel free to skip it. Um, there probably will be a slight variation, obviously, in, in the way I present this particular layout update, even though it's pretty much similar content to yesterday's. So my apologies once again, and um, we'll just get on, and let me get on with the layout update for you. So we'll first start at this end of the layout, and um, basically a lot of work has been done on this side. Now, there isn't a huge amount to do left with the layout as such. Now it's all about detailing and just putting the odd little bits and pieces in and um, just, yes, just adding little details and that's really what what it's about now for this layout for now. Um, I do want to put a palmet and stuff like that on the top of the layout, which is something else that about be my next major job, but in terms of the layout itself and what you look at, it's pretty much not too far off done anyway on this bit. But some of the little details I've added, and uh, we'll just take a little little peek. Um, actually, we'll work our way just from this little section here. Now we've got the little bus, bus depot here, and I've just added a couple of cars just here. I've found my box of cars, so I've now decided to just populate the layout with a few cars to give it a bit of life. Um, as we come back around here, which is where I did start, um, I've also, in this sort of waste ground area, I've divided it up into three. So I've got a um, a little a little fence there with a little picnic area, like a little viewing area. So we'll just kind of zoom into that a little bit. So what I had been doing is, um, over last week, I had been going through all my little boxes of knickknacks that I had for, oh, that came over from Behringer and really went through the boxes to see what could be salvaged and what could be realistically that I wasn't really going to need or use anymore. Um, just not, there wasn't any point in keeping odd bits and pieces just for the sake of it in case in, I might use it. So I, I really went through it with a fine tooth comb and I thought I could use utilised these little Metcalf kits. Um, and these came from Behringer, they were over at the coffee shop side. Um, and basically also they, you know, it, it was just something that I thought, actually, I can make use of these. They didn't have the parasols before. Um, the parasols do actually mean something to me, actually. The black and yellow ones kind of just remind me of when I, my time over at Fleet Bars when I used to work for them. And um, I did love working for them, and I really enjoyed the buses and enjoyed enjoyed the people over at Fleet. Um, the red and white one, and I think it's got a dragon type of thing or a lion or something. I'm not quite sure. But it just kind of reminds me of Alan over at Dragon Junction. Um, just because he kind of gave me the Hornby Elite to begin with. And I've never really forgotten him for that because that was a really sweet thing for him to do. And if it wasn't for him, then basically um, I wouldn't be doing DCC Sound right at the time that I started doing it at least. Uh, maybe now I would have done, but at the time... You know, I could have done with all the help that I could get, and he was kind enough to give me that Hornby Elite, and I do love his layout as well. So, yes, it's um, so that's a little bit of a like a little thank you and a homage to to him as well. Um, I've got a little train spotter, and he's just about there, and there's also a little metal dustbin which I had, so I thought, okay, we'll put that over there, and then we've got the little burger van over there. And that kind of makes it out like maybe the road sort of continues or there's a car park down that end and then they just walk to the picnic area. So that's kind of my view of it. So that's kind of like the first few bits that I've been doing. So we, we we're at the fueling point. As you can see, and um, again, I, I've been adding bits and pieces of my detailing bits, bits that I had from my previous Nightwing kit, which is what that is. That's not a... A Batman one that's actually a Nightwing kit that I've that I've salvaged. I've had that for years and years and years to be honest with you. And that's something else that kind of got salvaged from Behringer. Um, Jeff Redman also gave me a load of sh uh, heat shrink 
which I've used for, for the various hoses and everything like that. Um, Tony, Tony Northeastern came up with this idea of using solder to make a coil of hose, which is what I've done over on the far right hand corner. Um, I also added a pallet with a couple of oil drums on it and I think that looks pretty decent. I just need to find some proper people for it. And behind that is my first GBRF um, Sunderland 66725. Um, that's only just come out to play today. That's been sitting in the box for some time so I thought I'd just give it a quick little whirl. Um, also I've added um, some bits and pieces as you can see I've added some old sleepers, I've added some, some rails and <clears throat> I've also added a little sign there, disused sign that came from Behringer so I don't know if we can zoom in on that but we'll try but there you go so you can see the sleepers and the old signage and some rusty rails there so if I zoom back out now this building, the engine shed um, that's got um, that's just an engine shed shed on its own from Hornby Scaledale, but I've added actually this little extension here, and if I just pop it off, it literally just sits on it. And that's that's the actual building in its entirety, and this is just like a a, scr a scrap bit of card that I just put a, made a little lean to out of it. So just to make make a little extension as a store, so that's what I've done there, and then you just pop it back on there. It just sits on there. And there you go. Um, as we go down towards the warehouse side of things, right in the corner, um, you can see that I've really populated my warehouse with vehicles, mainly British Rail yellow vehicles. And also we've got some regular cars just here as if like their staff car parking area. We've also got the burger van and the transit van on the top left, which kind of that was the van that brought in the burger van. Um, also, um, I've added railings to my stairs, my emergency exit, which is just down there. So I've added railings out from an old sprue. Um, also, at the warehouse, I've started populating that as well, adding workers and bits and bobs, brute trolleys, pallets. So there's a chap there who's carrying a parcel over there. I've also added guttering. Uh, which is what that is over there. That's that's just guttering. And you can see the kink on the top where I've bent the, the metal to resemble guttering. There's some more brute trolleys. And, if, and there you go, there's some more guttering there and there. And then I've also added some more parcels um, and also some more figures. There's a chap there with um, with the trolley he's about to pick up that box and the guy next to him is explaining to him where he wants it and he wants it onto that pallet and then we've got the chap there who's in his forklift he's about to pick up that pallet to get it ready for for freight and to be packed up and sent out um here is a view of my engine shed without without the engine shed this is just basically the base so I've just done that. That was made out of balsa wood. I've also added the signage in front of it, which is those bits of signage, stop, do not cross. Um, I had an old wheel, which I've just dumped there for now, but I'm not sure whether that will stay there. So I'm just adding bits and pieces and see how it works and see whether I get on with it and see whether I like it. Something else I've been adding to the layout and trying to enhance it is all these other little bits and pieces just to get, add a bit more finer detail. Um, I've added the hut directly in front of you. That's also come from Behringer. And also I've now started dotting all these telegraph poles um, across the layout. Um, just again to give it some more and that extra detail. Um, as you can see there's just one here and there's one up the top. Um, so that's that's also been done. Um, I've also added some signage to the signal box. It now says Ringwood South on it. Um, and I've also disguised this corner here. And if I zoom in a bit, that's the, that's basically the, the exit to the fill yard. So I've added the, um, the warehouses there on the back wall there. 
and I've also added um, a new sort of girder bridge just over there out of scraps and just blended that into the wall and that gives it a more finished look and a more presentable look I think I've also added some signals well I say signals I said um, it's a si well that's the main signal the one and only main signal which is that double gantry from Hornby and that's really worked out really really well actually I thought it might look a bit too plasticky but actually it's come out all right and I'm pretty pleased with it but the thing is um, Dapol and I, don't, I haven't seen anybody do any double gantries like that apart from Hornby okay then they are working manually but they're not automated or anything like that but they do exactly what I need it to do as you can see I've got some more uh, I've got another telegraph pole and there's also another some another board there plus a speed restriction sign that's also there um, we also have a car which is parked here as well and as you move towards the end of the layout you can also see the scale of the the telegraph poles where they all lined up all the way down to the end and you can probably see four of them there um, so and they were all painted up and they all came from Behringer as well and salvaged from Behringer so it's all these little bits and pieces that you can see also you can see some rails also just left on the wayside there which has also been um, added also we have a pillar box right in the corner plus a um, plus a phone box And we also have some sleepers right in the corner of the turntable, just about there. I've also populated or started populating the roads with some more vehicles and some more cars and things like that. And we've also got some, I'm not sure if I showed you that, but we've got some signage up on the station with some additional people as well. And that pretty much concludes the, um, the layout update as such. And I will do some free hand work in a minute just to show you some other bits and pieces. So this bit here is going to be the beginning of my extension out off the board, off the railway line. And I will show you how it's going to look. So basically you can pop the end off now. Which would make for some great camera angles actually. For some running shots. You know, as trains coming towards, so you can also have it like that. But basically, it's, this is going to be like a bridge. It's not going to look anything like this. This is just just the beginning, and it runs just towards here at the moment. It's about three and a half feet long, um, which which is really really useful and really good for me. I'm really pleased with that. Um, I always thought that the station was a bit short, so there, there is this plan just to make turn this into some sort of. Um, What's the word I'm looking for? I'm going to turn this into some sort of feature, that's it. That's what I'm going to do, I'm going to turn it into a feature. So again, it's not going to look nothing like this, it just looks like a plain, a plain board right now. But if you sort of base it on what I've done so far with the layout, you can sort of see where the quality is going to be and how it's going to look. You know, you can sort of see that it's going to be decent, decent quality when I finished it, basically. Over at the yard here, we have one of my, my other 50s to go for the 50s at 50 event. So I've got three at the moment that's ready um, at the moment. Um, I've got these two wagons which I found recently, which I got from Eastley some time ago. And I, I've put them somewhere, I couldn't find them for weeks and weeks, and now I've found them again. So they'll join up with these two here, and they make a nice little rake. Um, I've got the two from Folkestone on the layout as it so happens at the moment. I decided to bring out my 128 and I've had that running on the layout and that actually really suits the layout really lovely. Um, the Class 20 has also been brought out recently so I've been trying to sort of use some of my other locomotives that I've got knocking about. Um, also up here I've put a shelf up. So I've got some locomotives sitting here at the moment. Um, I've got my Batman 25. Um, and I've got a Batman 20 there, my 08 Batman there, Batman 24. Um, this is my Batman 66 with DCC Coastal Sound. My Hornby TTS Railroad Class 20. Um, this is my Batman 37 with TTS Sound. Um, this is my Batman 47 with TTS Sound. This is my 73 um, Hornby Lima um, Hybrid. Um, that hasn't got any sound in it as yet. Um, and I've got my class 68002 Intrepid with DRS livery, touch wood, 
She's been pretty good to me. It's been all right now, thankfully, after all the dramas. And then I've got my Helgen Class 1 4 teddy bear at the back there. So that pretty much concludes my layout update for this week, month. Um, I guess it was a month ago I did last check when I did last of that, a layout update. So this is about, since last month, this is what's been done. So um, when I'm off next in a concerted effort, I'll probably will be working on the extension side of it, um, just to give the layout a bit of extra length. This isn't actually, I should point out, isn't actually the official extension. Um, I was I did talk about doing a Litton project. Um, this isn't it. The Litton project was really based on when I next move. Uh, but I don't know when that will be, whether it will be next year or this year or, or whatever. I'm not entirely certain. But this is just a little mini extension just to help with the layout for now. So until the next time, um, and tomorrow will be Milton Keynes. So I look forward to meeting a number of you there. And um, until the next time, it's bye from Ringwood South. Bye-bye.